Welcome everybody. We're gonna to talk today about right start fractions. I'm your host, I'm Kathleen Cotter Lawler, and this is gonna be based on the work of Dr. Joan A. Cotter, who is the curriculum developer for the Right Start Mathematics curriculum. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Fractions, they tend to have a bad reputation. People are like, ooh, fractions, no thank you. Well. Here's actually a cartoon talking about that where we've got the Peanuts character saying, so now we have a cut apple in half and we have two halves and that's fractions. You're trying to teach me fractions. Again, we generally have a bad reputation of fractions and it's often reviewed as incomprehensible and unpredictable. I mean, who gets fractions? They're scary. Well, that's actually not the case. This is a huge misunderstanding. Fractions are very ne necessary and very useful. We use them all the time with clocks. So in case here, we have quarter after the hour. We're using fractions. We use them with our money. We use them with cooking. So fractions are very ne necessary and they are actually quite amazing. And you're gonna see that as we go through this presentation. So first of all, let's look at the history of fractions. The Latin word frangi means to break. It's considered, and historically, it was considered only part of a whole. It wasn't more than a whole. It could never be equal or greater to than one. It was only part of a whole. So here we have one broken into two equal pieces, three equal pieces, fours, fifths, sixths, seventh, eighth, ninth, and tenths. This is the historical view of fractions. But in the 1600s, the concepts of fractions expanded. And then it included a division perspective. So fractions under the new perspective could be equal or greater than one. So here we have one third. So here's one. We break it into three equal pieces. We have one third. This is the old way of looking at it. Under the new, once division, if I have two divided by two, so here I have two divided into two equal pieces, gives me one. So let me go back and do this again real quick. So here I have two, I'm gonna divide it into two equal pieces. I have the division perspective, divided into two equal pieces is one. What if I have two thirds? So I'm gonna take two divided into, so here's my two, divided into three equal pieces would be this. So now let's go and look and see how that's related to the two thirds that we often think of. So here I have one broken into three equal pieces. I have two out of the three colored or two thirds. It's a different way of looking at it. And once you can look at it with the division perspective, it's going to make a, a division, or excuse me, fractions can make a lot more sense. So, as a quick summary, old fractions, they always had to be less than one. New fractions can be equal or greater than one. So, an old fraction would be one third. New fractions could be one third, three thirds, four thirds. With the old, the whole is fractured. With the new, it's considered as division. Old fractions were familiar, so they said they were proper. New fractions, they said, mm, I don't know about this, they're improper. That's actually where those words came from, proper and improper. But here's the other problem, is the old fractions had a very limited view, whereas the new fractions supports understanding. This is where you want your children to be, and yourselves. Now, frequently we use circles to go through with fractions, to look at fractions. So here I've got these, but my question is, is are we comparing angles or arcs or area? Now, sometimes children are so confused by the time they get to fractions, they never even consider this, but maybe you've got a bright child who's looking at this going, oh yeah, I'm not sure what we're supposed to be doing with it. It's very difficult to see. And then try to compare four fifths and five sixths using this model. I have no idea, it's very difficult to see. So here I have one fifth, three fifths, 
five fifths, six fifths, nine fifths. But here's the deal. Experts in visual literacy say that comparing quantities in pie charts is difficult because most people think in a line. It's easier to compare along a straight line than it is to compare pie slices. And actually there's another group that suggests refraining from using more than one pie chart for comparison. So we've got multiple reasons why the pie charts really aren't the best for fractions. So what, would, what should we do? What's our answer? Actually, use a linear model. Here's a linear chart. So here I've got one fifth right there. Here's three fifths, five fifths, six fifths. So looking at my fraction chart, we wanna have the children start by putting it together like a puzzle. So here I have one, two halves, three thirds, four fourths. By the way, don't call them quarters, call them fourths, because we have a pattern. If we say, actually let me keep going here for a second, so we have five fifths, six sixths, and the reason we wanna go back to the fourths, the reason we wanna call them fourths during fraction class is because there's a pattern. If I say one half, one third, one fourth, one fifth, one sixth, one seventh, one eighth, one ninth, one tenth, there's a pattern. But if I say one half, one third, one quarter, one fifth, you interrupt the pattern. So yes, of course, one quarter is the same thing as one fourth, but in class, call it fourth. Here's an interesting pattern with two thirds, three fourths, four fifths, five sixths. Here I'm going to take it, I'm going to stack them up this way. This curve right here is a hyperbola. Or I could center them, and now I have two hyperbolas. But looking at my fraction chart, a lot of people look at this and, and say, well, okay, but we should color it. Now the problem with it being colored is your eyes no longer see some of the patterns. So notice the pattern, if you can see my mouse here, see this pattern that goes up and back down again. I've even got it right down here. You've got these patterns. I just look at the green numbers and see how this comes up and down. But now if I go here, do you see that pattern? Not really. I mean, you kind of struggle, you can see it, but you keep getting interrupted by the colors. Children who have color issues where they maybe don't want to put the, the three orange ones next to the, the yellow one or the five oranges next to something because they don't like the colors together. It, it introduces an unnecessary component into fractions. So leave it without the color. Now, some people say, okay, fine, we'll leave it without the color, but let's get rid of the sevens and ninths because who uses those and let's add in the twelfths. Okay, remember that pattern? You can still see this one here. It's a little different, but you can see it. But remember there was one down here? That is gone. Also too, if I look at this, being a very literal person, I could space line, space line, space line, line, line. So what, there's no even fractions, there's no odd number fractions after one fifth? This gives another misconception. So when you're putting together your chart, show the child the whole thing so that they can see the pattern with it. So I've got, I've got line, number, line, number, line, number, line, number, there's a pattern in here. So once we've learned these things, how should we practice what we've learned? Well, most of you are thinking worksheets. Well, ask your kids or even ask yourself, is that something you really wanna do? No. So let's play games. Games are to math like books are to reading. How do children get good at learning to read? You read books, preferably interesting books. So we're gonna do the same thing with math. We're gonna play games. Games provide the instant feedback. If I have a wrong answer, I have my answer right now. It also provides repetition that's needed for those automatic responses in a social setting. So it's not just something that you do in a dark corner and get it over with. You play with your family members, you play with your parents, your grandparents, your siblings, and you're having fun with it. And more importantly, games provide an application for the new information that children are learning. So let's look at a game here. We're gonna do unit fraction war. So for some of you are thinking, oh, what's a unit fraction? Unit fraction is one fourth, one eighth, one tenth. So it's one over something. So our purpose of this game is to practice naming and comparing 
unit fractions. And it also helps a child realize that a unit fraction decreases as the denominator, the bottom number, increases. So our goal is to collect all or some of the, or all or most of the cards by comparing the fractions. So here I've got my chart. I've got two people playing. It's a regular war game. Remember how to play war? You lay down two cards. Whoever has the higher one takes it. So we're going to each turn over one card. What's more, one fourth or one fifth? Now some children are going to say, well, one fifth because five is bigger than four. Well, let's go look at our chart here. So here's one fourth. Here's one fifth. Which is more? Well, the one fourth, it's bigger. So the, this person here is going to take both cards. Okay, so they won that hand. So now one eighth and one half. And again, if I need to, I can look at my chart. One eighth is the green, one half is the blue, one half is by far bigger. So that person takes it. Oh, now we have a war. Lay down an extra card. And now who takes it? One third or one fourth be the one third. And so they get all six of those cards. It's a very simple game, but it helps the children understand the value and the perspective of fractions. So here's our chart. And let's look at it. And let's ask ourselves, how many fourths are in a whole? Well, I can count them. One, two, three, four of them. Okay, that wasn't difficult. Try another one. How many fifths are in a whole? Answer is five. How many eighths? Eight. So we're going to play a game, surprise, we're going to play a game called concentrating on one. And our purpose is to help the child realize that five fifths and eight eighths and so forth make a whole. And our goal is to find the most pairs that make a whole. So here I have a pre-selected group of cards and of course my fraction chart. So I'll do the first one, three fifths. Three fifths needs what to make one? So I've got three fifths on my chart. I need two more fifths. So I'm gonna turn over a card and hope I get three, two fifths. And I did, yay! So I scoop them up. Okay, I get another turn now. So three eighths, so on my chart there's three eighths. What do I need to make one? I can see right there, I need five more eighths. So I'm gonna turn over this card, shoot. Okay, so I turn them back. Now it's your turn. So you turn over this card, five eighths, check your chart. Even though you think you know the answer, double check it just to make sure. Five eighths needs what to make one? Three more eighths, do you remember where that is? Right there, good job. And now you got that. So you see how we're just, basically it's a worksheet. The kids will play it for hours and that's what we want them to do. Again, it's a worksheet. We usually say 10 to 15 minutes of a game is the same thing as a worksheet. So play the card games. All right, let's begin to compare fractions. So what's more, three-fourths or four-fifths? Three-fourths or four-fifths? Oh, I can clearly see that four-fifths is bigger, okay? What about seven-eighths or eight-ninths? Seven-eighths or eight-ninths? Ooh, eight ninths just by a hair. So we're comparing them. Now, but what if we were using fraction circles? What's more, four fifths or five sixths? Whew, that's kind of hard to tell. That's our problem with our fraction circles. Which model is easier? I think it's going to be the linear one. This is going to be much easier. Now, let's take a partial chart. So we're gonna keep this one intact and we're gonna take a second one and cut it apart. Now I'm gonna do something here. You can't do this in real life, but I wanna show you this. I'm gonna erase my horizontal lines. I'm gonna get rid of my little green numbers. What does this look like? It's a ruler, exactly. So we're gonna play a game, surprise. We're gonna play a game called Fraction War. So similar to what we were doing with the unit fraction war, except now we're going to compare the ones, halves, fourths, and eighths to help the children learn how to read a ruler. And a goal, again, is to capture all the cards. So I'm going to keep my chart up here. Again, we've got our cards. Lay down two cards. Who has more, three-eighths or one-fourth? Three-eighths or one-fourth? Three-eighths would be more. There we go. Five-eighths or three-fourths? Five-eighths 
or three fourths. Real quick story about this. I just want to tell you real quick. My son Matthew and I were practicing this one day, and as you can tell, we're just comparing them. But he looked at this. He said, "Ma, I beat you by an eighth," and that was not what we were trying to do. But he was right. He did beat me by an eighth. Here we have another war. And who takes this one? It'd be the three A's. Once you get good at it, you can do an advanced fraction war where you've got something like what's more, four sevenths or five ninths, and do the comparison that way. We also do have a game app with fraction war. So you can have the very beginning games. The beginner is going to do halves, fourths, and eighths. And then the easy, we add in, I think it's the thirds and the sixth. And then the medium adds in fifths and tenths. And then the last one does uh, percentages. All right, let's look at equivalent fractions. So how many fourths equal a half? So there's my half. How many fourths equal a half? Be two fourths. How many eighths equal a half? There's my half. How many eighths? That'd be four of them. How many sevenths equal a half? There's my half. How many sevenths? Well, looking at the chart, it's obviously going to be three and a half sevenths. Now, we tend not to say three and a half sevenths, but there's no rule that says that you can't. It's obviously three and a half sevenths. What about fractions greater than one? So let's look at fractions greater than one. There we have nine eighths. That was easy. So let's look at proper and improper fractions. So here I have what? How many eighths? I have nine eighths. What do I have here? Five thirds. And what about this last one? Three fourths. Now, looking at those, which of these fractions are proper? Be just the three fourths. Which ones are improper? Think back to the history lesson. Which ones are can be greater than or equal to one? That'd be the nine eighths and the five thirds. So let's rewrite our improper fractions using whole numbers. So looking at the nine eighths first, what do we have? We have one and one eighth. Now we're not teaching the children the rules. We're just kind of looking at understanding it so that we can progress from there. Let's do the next one here. What do I have? This is my five thirds. So I have one and two thirds. See how this makes it so easy. It's almost anticlimatically easy. Let's do four fifths plus three fifths. Four fifths plus three fifths. Answer is, how many do I have all together? Seven fifths. And I'm going to rewrite it. And I can say it's one and two fifths. Let's do five eighths plus seven eighths. Five eighths plus seven eighths. What do I have? All together, I have 12 eighths. Rewriting it, I'm going to have one and four eighths. Help your child discover the algorithm. You don't get to just tell them. Help them discover it, like I'm doing with you here. We can see why it works, and then from there, we can discover what's the process. Um, an 18th century physicist, physicist says, what you have been obliged to learn by yourself leaves a path in your mind so that you can use it again when the need arises. So sometimes it's not knowing what it is, it's knowing how to get there can get you to the what it is. And that's very important. All right, let's look at simplifying fractions. So here I have 5 tenths. I can simplify that to 1 half. Here I have four eighths. I can simplify that to one half. Three sixths, two fourths. So all of these are the same amount. That's what simplifying fractions is. 
Now, there's actually a way you can do this using the multiplication chart. Now, this is just your regular chart. So here I've got seven times five is 35, nine times nine is 81. This is just your multiplication chart, nothing exciting about it. But you can actually use this to simplify fractions. So look at this, I have five tenths. Now, when you do this, you have to have them in the same column. They don't have to be touching, but they have to be in the same column. So five tenths, we already know, is the same thing as one half. Four eighths is the same thing as one half. Three six, two fourths, just like we discovered on the chart. So we can use the multiplication chart to help us simplify the fractions. So let's try this one here. Let's do 21 28 21 28 21 28 I can simplify it by moving it to the left. Answer is 3 fourths. Let's do another one here. 45 70 seconds. 45 70 seconds. Now remember I said they don't have to be touching as long as they're in the same column, in the same column up and down. So I have 45, 70 seconds. Answer is 5 eighths. Now, why does this work? Well, some of you have already tried to figure this out and some of you are like, oh, I have no idea. Well, what we're doing is they're both being divided by nine. 45 divided by nine is five and 72 divided by nine is eight. That's why 45, 70 seconds is the same thing as 5 eighths. All right, let's do this here. Let's do 12 sixteenths. Let's say I found it on the chart right here in the twos column. 12 sixteenths is 6 eighths. But look at here's 6 eighths again. So I can jump around, I can jump to my pieces to get it simplified. Now I could have found my 12 sixteenths here. I didn't. Still worked out. Remember, let your child discover the algorithm so that you're not telling them, you're guiding them to the discovery. All right, let's look at adding fractions. I know we did a little bit of already, but let's be a little bit more, um, let's go more to mixed, right, excuse me, um, different denominators. So what's one fourth plus one eighth? Just a second here. What's one fourth plus one eighth? Here's one fourth plus one eighth down here. So looking at this, we've got to, got to kind of get them together. So let's scooch this one eighth over, move this one fourth down, because another way of saying one fourth is two eighths. Oh, now I can obviously see my answer. It's going to be three eighths. Let's do another one here. What's one half plus one third? So it's going to be a little bit trickier. I'm going to have one half and here's one third. So now if I move the one half down to fourths, is that going to be helpful? No. What if I move it down to the sixth? So one half is the same thing as three sixths. Yes, this is going to make sense. So I'm just going to remember that. Here's my one third. I'm going to change that to six also. So that's two six. So let's go put our one half back in there. One half was the same thing as three six. Right there, three six. So my answer, one half plus one third is five six. Isn't that cool? It just makes it so easy when you see it this way. All right, let's look at multiplying fractions. Let's see how this works. So what's one half of one half? It'd be one fourth. What's one third of one half? So here's my half. What's, my, what's one third of it? Break it into three equal parts. Answer is one sixth. We just multiplied fractions. Nobody cried, and that's the way we want it. All right, let's look at multiplying fractions. Now, so often people think of multiplying is repeated addition. It's so much, it's more than that. So yes, it is repeated addition, but if you have something like, you know, if you got four times four is the same thing as four plus four plus four plus four, but if you do one half times one half, it's not one half plus one half. So multiplying is more than repeated addition. Let's look at area to help us with it. So if I do four times four, I've got four across the top and down the side, four times four is oops, 16. So if I do one half times one half, let's do the same thing. I've got 
We already know the answer is one fourth. So here I've got a box. I'm going to cut it in half. I'm going to take the one half. And then I want one half of that. So what do I have that's cross hatched and shaded? Answer would be one fourth. Let's do another one, a little harder. Let's do two thirds times three fourths. Okay, so I have two thirds times three fourths. So I'm gonna start with the three fourths. And then I wanna know what's two thirds of that. So I need to cut it into three equal pieces and shade in two. So what do I have again that's shaded and cross-hatched? Answer would be six. Six out of the, how many do I have altogether? Six twelfths. How did we figure this out? The total number of rectangles is three times four which is what I have right here on the denominators of my fractions. The total number of crosshatch, the colored crosshatch rectangles is two times three, which of course is the top part, the, the numerators of my fractions. I multiply them together. That's why the rule works to multiply them across. You can see it with this experience. So our fraction chart, it's best to approach it with a linear model. The linear model allows the child to explore the whole picture and the relationships within the whole using that linear perspective. The Right Start Mathematics curriculum teaches fractions all the way through. We teach it A through F, but there's more focus in levels D, E, and F. But there is a carve out available which we call right start fractions. And this is gonna have lessons and games every day to practice what we've learned. It comes as a kit. We've got it all, the whole thing together and ready to roll for you. In conclusion, math needs to be taught. So 95% is understood and only 5% memorized. Dr. Cotter says our goal as a teacher of mathematics is to help our children transform, expand, and refine these beginning ideas into deeper mathematical thinking. Let us know what we can do to help you. Uh, go to our website, rightstartmath.com. You can email us at info at rightstartmath.com, or you can give us a call and we'll, we'll let it talk to us and we'll see what we can do for you. Phone number 888-272. 3291. Let us know what we can do for you and your children so that we get fractions back to the fun side of things. Thank you, everybody. Have a wonderful day and take care. Bye bye.